I really shouldn't have to say it at this point with all the videos I've made about it, but The Flash is easily one of my favorite TV shows. I've been watching it as since 2015 when it was halfway through season two, and I just have not missed an episode weekly since. But I have noticed over the past couple of seasons that this show has a big problem, a very killer problem. And it was all the more noticeable after the show's most recent outing entitled Growing Pains. And that problem is Killer Frost. Caitlyn Snow hasn't always been a bad character. In fact, back in seasons 1, 2, and even to an extent 3, she was a pretty compelling addition to the cast. Sure, her plots in seasons 1 and 2 were virtually identical, and then parts of it were repeated in season 3 as well. She actively had a love interest and always went down in some bizarre way, whether they died saving the city, or were a supervillain, or just were a supervillain and then left the show with no real ceremony, I guess. Still, at the end of the day, I feel like I enjoyed her storylines just enough to where she wasn't my favorite character, but I did mind having her on the show. By the time season 3 rolled around, her character was a slight highlight in that otherwise disappointing season, and her downfall to Killer Frost was compelling. I really enjoyed the first episode dealing with her as that type of character, I just wish they'd managed to keep it interesting. Sadly though, season 4 is when it started to really go downhill. Instead of continuing with the type of arc they'd set up with Caitlyn and Killer Frost existing as one entity, they essentially retconned her storyline into them being separate personalities. I feel like this was somewhat mentioned in season 3 with Caitlyn weirdly going evil when she used her powers, but season 4 did it in a completely new way that I feel like wasn't actually alluded to. This is about the time when I started to hate Caitlyn Snow and Killer Frost as characters. Killer Frost became an annoying girl boss type character who was just sassy and loudmouthed in all the wrong ways, and Caitlyn became all her worst and annoying attributes dialed up to just 11. I feel like the storyline even ended up super bad by the end of it as Caitlyn and Killer Frost began to develop such a sort of connection with each other. The writing on the show just made it seem weird the way the two interacted, and it all built up to a scene where DeVoe takes her powers away, which drives Caitlyn to just do batshit stupid things, like walk into a fight with the Thinker with a cold gun trying to bring back Killer Frost. Why did you think this was gonna work? <laughs> you could have died. This is the point where any creativity with this character vanished and she just became a truck with its wheels stuck in the mud, trying helplessly to spin their way out of what they've gotten stuck in. Over the next few episodes, Caitlyn starts to act like a total lunatic, obsessed with getting her powers back. It is such an unhealthy character arc that she even goes to working with a human trafficker. Her and her team work with Amunet Black, a meta-human trafficker. So let's go ahead and recap. Caitlyn got ice powers the night of the particle accelerator explosion that manifested three years later. Using these ice powers made her turn evil, but that evil half was actually just a split personality that later becomes very good friends with her only for powers to be taken away by the thinker, right? Wrong. DeVoe actually never took her powers. She also didn't get her powers from the particle accelerator. They were there all along. Oh, and her dad, who she believed to be dead for several years, is alive, and he's a bad guy. If everything I explained wrong about Caitlyn in Season 4 sounded bad, you're not ready for what happens in Season 5. She learns that her dad was always alive and actually an evil supervillain named Icicle, who is quite possibly one of the worst villains we've ever had on the show. And she also learns their powers weren't from Dark Matter, which gives her the ability to take down Cicada, whose dagger only drains Dark Matter. This is such a stupid thing to do, because they just needed a character who was in immune to his powers so that they could have I don't know, I guess fights that were a bit more interesting than just superhero loses powers and then Cicada flies away. I don't understand the decision to retcon her powers in such a way that just doesn't make any sense. Like, how did Caitlyn never really notice her powers up until she was in her late 20s where she just started manifesting them? It would make so much more sense if it was the particle accelerator explosion and this arc is just so, so not thought out at all. Killer Frost and Caitlyn also bicker throughout the entire season, which just makes no sense. They bicker about the metahuman cure, but the metahuman cure works by suppressing dark matter, but we know Caitlyn's powers don't come from dark matter, so even if Caitlyn used the cure on herself, it wouldn't get rid of Killer Frost because her power isn't from dark matter. It 
doesn't make any sense. We even get some terrible, terrible moments with Icicle later in season five when he's randomly redeemed by Caitlyn just, I guess, being his family. And then Icicle's killed by Cicada, who just comes out of nowhere in that episode. And I guess that brings us to the show's sixth season, also known as the best and only good Killer Frost season of the show. And that isn't to say it's even that great, but it's the only time where her involvement wasn't terrible. They make Caitlyn and Frost feel like distinct characters, and Danielle Panabaker isn't even in the season on a lot of the back half due to her pregnancy. The storyline and character stuff we get with her just feels fine, I guess, and it's never as intrusive as it was in seasons 4 and 5 where she would get entire episodes dedicated to her nonsensical plotline that just pissed me off. I also do kind of enjoy the vibe that Frost adds throughout the season. It shows she can be an enjoyable addition to Team Flash if it works. Unfortunately, the show has kind of pissed all of that away with Season 7, and I know Season 7 isn't done yet. Hell, this particular Caitlyn arc isn't even done, I, the show's on a hiatus while I'm making this video, so maybe it gets better, but it could just also get fucking worse, who knows? The peak of her character occurs when she temporarily gets super speed in Episode 2, and you know what? This was produced as a Season 6 episode, so as far as I know, that's included in Season 6 as the only good Killer Frost season. And right after that, Season 7 makes sure to kick things right off by splitting Caitlyn and Killer Frost into two separate beings. They also, within the same episode as doing this, introduce a plot about how Killer Frost is a fugitive again, despite the fact that this has never been brought up since season 3. Should she be a fugitive? Yeah, she's a super criminal. But why wait so long? And why do it just as they split? That seems super convenient on a writing side just so they could potentially get rid of one of the characters and keep the other. <sighs> and then we get to episode 7 of the season, Growing Pains. One of the worst episodes of the show, and it's not even all Caitlyn's fault. Everything else in the episode is just not that great. I just... We get introduced to Chill Blaine, who takes his shirt off to a fucking Nelly song. So now Frost, not Caitlyn, they're separate, remember, is arrested and going on trial. And you know what? I don't care. I do not care what goes on. Every single thing they introduce with this character is one of the worst things the show has done. And I wish it wasn't like that. So, let's do one last recap. Caitlyn's father experimented on her as a child, giving her cold powers that she never knew about until her late 20s when she suddenly developed an alternate personality that her mother explained as her turning evil. She then works with Savitar to kill Iris, only to decide, hey, I'm not actually evil, and then works with a human trafficker, eventually getting over it and developing a connection with her so-called evil personality, which led to an attachment issue once DeVoe put up a mental block in her head, preventing her from using her powers. Caitlyn gets over it, fights her evil dad who dies to Cicada, and then Frost decides she wants her own life, and her and Caitlyn gain fully different bodies only for the two to literally split into where Frost is now under arrest for her crimes when she helps Savitar. Sound confusing? Because it fucking is. And it's even worse when you watch every season of the show and they do so much with one iteration of Killer Frost only to retcon her into a completely different character than what we had just seen. And I know I've been nothing but negative and I've just sat here explaining literally what's happened with her character, but that's all that needs to be done. She has had nothing good happen to her for four seasons now and it is staggering to me and baffling that this can even happen to a character. How can we fix Killer Frost? Is there a way to fix the character? Maybe. I think first of all, we should just write the character off. She's reached a natural end point to where anything else is just gonna feel like repeating things. But if you need to keep Caitlyn or Killer Frost on the show, only keep one of them. Having two of them as separate personalities already makes the cast feel even more bloated despite the fact that it's only portrayed by one actress. I would say get rid of Killer Frost and keep Caitlyn or get rid of Caitlyn and keep Killer Frost. Either one of the two would be better than both of them and maybe you would actually be able to focus on writing one of them competently. But still, at the end of the day, I think that they should both go. Neither of them have added anything worthwhile and they're all just kind of there just to take up screen time. It gets to the point where Frost's involvement in an episode can just sap the fun out of it for me and it has also gone to the point where Caitlyn just feels useless <sighs> it's past time for both of them to go and now it's time for me to go I hope you enjoyed this video even if it is just a ranting video about Killer Frost I do love this show even some of the things I talk about in seasons four and five I do enjoy those seasons on their own I just 
this most recent episode of The Flash really taught me that, like, the show really does have a massive issue with this character, and they need to fix it before it gets even worse to the point where the show could become just bad overall because a character gets too much screen time. I really wonder what the reason for keeping her on the show is. Maybe the writers have some grand plan for her, and again, maybe the storyline they're doing right now concludes well next week when the show comes back. I don't know, and I don't think it will. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.